Story 1. Margaret had always been fascinated by the wildlife of Africa, and Tanzania had been on the top of her bucket list for as long as she could remember. She had always dreamed of going on a walking safari to see the animals up close and experience the wildness of the African savanna. And finally, after years of planning and saving, she made it to Tanzania. Margaret was an experienced traveler who knew the risks of going on a walking safari. She had done her research and chose a reputable safari company with a good safety record. She had also packed all the necessary gear, including a sturdy pair of boots and a whistle to signal for help in an emergency. On the first day of her safari, Margaret was excited. She and her guide, a Maasai tour guide named Saitoti, set out early in the morning to explore the savanna. They walked for hours, marveling at the landscape's beauty and the wildlife's diversity. They saw herds of zebras and wildebeest grazing peacefully, and groups of giraffes browsing on the leaves of acacia trees. As they walked, Saitoti taught Margaret about the Maasai way of life and traditional hunting and gathering methods. Margaret was fascinated by the deep connection that the Maasai had with their environment and their respect for the animals they hunted. As the sun began to set, Saitoti suggested they make camp for the night. Margaret was thrilled at the idea of sleeping out in the open under the stars. They set up their tents near a water hole and started a fire to cook dinner. As they ate, Margaret couldn't help but feel a sense of awe at the wildness of the place. She felt small and insignificant in the savannah's vastness. Yet at the same time, she felt connected to the natural world in a way she had never experienced before. After dinner, Margaret and Saitoti sat by the fire, talking and listening to the sounds of the night. Suddenly, they heard a low growl in the distance. Saitoti tensed up, and Margaret felt a surge of fear. They both knew what it meant. A lion was nearby. Saitoti quickly grabbed his spear and his flashlight, and went to investigate. Margaret stayed behind, too scared to move. She sat by the fire, listening to the sounds of the night and trying to calm her nerves. Suddenly, she heard a loud roar and then a scream. She knew it was Saitoti. Without thinking, she grabbed her whistle and ran towards the sound. When she arrived, she saw the lion. It was huge with golden fur and piercing eyes. It had Saitoti in its jaws, shaking him like a rag doll. Margaret blew her whistle as loud as she could, hoping to scare the lion away, but the animal was too focused on its prey. It dropped Saitoti and turned toward Margaret. Margaret froze. She knew running would only worsen things, but she couldn't help it. She turned and ran as fast as she could, hoping that the lion wouldn't catch her, but it did. The lion tackled her from behind, knocking her to the ground face first. She felt its claws tearing into her flesh and screamed in pain. The lion began biting, pawing, and clawing Margaret's back, causing it to bleed profusely. As she lay there, feeling the life draining out of her, Margaret thought about everything she still wanted to do. She thought about her family and friends and wished she could say goodbye to them. She still tried to fight the lion with her bare strength, but it was useless. Suddenly, she heard loud noises from several people, and she began to see huge rocks thrown at the predator attacking her. Turns out, other guides and tourists also going for a walking safari that night had heard her and came to help her. They kept approaching the lion together and throwing stones at it until it fled from the scene leaving Margaret and Saitoti unconscious on the ground. The people immediately rushed the two to the nearest hospital, where both were told to be in critical condition. Still, they miraculously survived, especially Saitoti, who the lion mauled earlier. After a few weeks of initial treatment, Margaret was taken back to her country to continue her healing process there and fully recover. So far, her trip to Tanzania might be the most dangerous and terrifying one she had ever experienced. Still, she was grateful to have Saitoti and the other locals there who protected her when her life was so close to its end. Story 2 
Elliot was an adventurous eight-year-old boy who loved animals. He would spend hours reading books about different types of animals and watching documentaries about them. So when his parents decided to take him on a drive through safari, he was ecstatic. The family arrived at the safari early in the morning and drove through the park. Elliot was in the back seat, his nose pressed against the window, watching in awe as he saw lions, tigers, and zebras walking freely. He had never seen anything like it before. The excitement of the safari was too much for him, and he begged his parents to let him get out of the car and pet one of the lions. His parents initially said no, as they knew it was dangerous, but Elliot was persistent, and they eventually agreed to let him get out and pet a friendly lion. The family parked the car, and Elliot left, slowly walking toward the lion. At first, the lion seemed calm, and Elliot reached out to pet it. But suddenly, without warning, the lion lunged at him, biting his arm and dragging him to the ground. Elliot screamed in pain as the lion continued to attack him. His mother, Dorothy, watching from the car, jumped out and ran towards the lion, trying to pull it away from her son. The lion turned its attention toward Dorothy, who was also attacked. The two were fighting for their lives as the lion mauled them both. Finally, after an eternity, the lion stopped attacking and retreated back into the bushes. Elliot was badly injured and bleeding, but he was alive. His mother, on the other hand, was in critical condition. The family quickly returned to their car and drove towards the park entrance, where they called for emergency services. When the paramedics arrived, they rushed Elliot and Dorothy to the hospital. Elliot had sustained severe injuries to his arm, which required surgery, and he also had several bites on his legs and torso. On the other hand, Dorothy had been mauled all over her body and had multiple fractures. She was in a coma for several days, and the family was told that her chances of survival were slim. The days that followed were a blur for Elliot and his family. They spent most of their time at the hospital, praying for Dorothy's recovery. The doctors did all they could to save her, but were uncertain whether she would make it. Finally, after three weeks, Dorothy woke up from her coma. She was weak and in great pain, but she was alive. Elliot was overjoyed to see his mother awake, and he couldn't stop thanking her for saving his life. Over the next few months, Elliot and Dorothy had to undergo several surgeries and therapy sessions. Elliot had to have physical therapy to help him regain strength and mobility in his arm, and he had to receive counseling to help him deal with the trauma of the attack. On the other hand, Dorothy had to undergo multiple surgeries to repair the damage to her body, and she had to receive extensive rehabilitation to learn how to walk again. Despite the trauma they had gone through, Elliot and his family emerged stronger and more resilient. They had learned a valuable lesson about the dangers of wild animals and the importance of respecting them. They also learned the importance of family and how precious life is. Elliot still loved animals, but he now knew that some animals were not meant to be petted or touched. He channeled his love for animals into studying and learning about their habitats and behaviors. Dorothy also learned a valuable lesson and advocated for animal safety, working with the park to increase safety measures and educate visitors about the dangers of interacting with wild animals. Story 4 Bhavan was a young boy from the small village of Junagadh in Gujarat, India. He lived a simple life with his family tending to their herd of cattle and helping with chores around the house. Bhavan had always been fascinated by the wildlife that roamed the nearby Gir forest, home to the majestic Asiatic lion. While tending to the cattle one day, Bhavan heard a loud roar in the distance. He knew it was the sound of a lion and quickly scanned the area for any signs of danger. As he looked around, he noticed that one of the cows was missing. Worried that the lion might have attacked the cow, Bavin set out to find it. As he searched for the missing cow, Bavin noticed that the forest sounds had become eerily quiet. Suddenly, he saw a movement in the bushes ahead of him. Before he could react, a large male lion pounced on him and knocked him to the ground. Bavin struggled to get up, but the lion had sunk its sharp claws into his back, 
tearing through his flesh and causing excruciating pain. The lion had Bavin pinned to the ground and growled menacingly at him. Bavin tried to fight back, but was no match for the powerful predator. The lion continued to attack him, biting and clawing him mercilessly. Bavin could feel his life slipping away as the lion mauled him. Despite the pain and fear, Bavin refused to give up. He summoned all his strength and fought back with all his might. He kicked and punched the lion, hitting it with whatever he could find. His desperate struggle continued for what seemed like an eternity. Eventually, the lion grew tired of the fight and retreated into the forest, leaving Bavin battered and bleeding on the ground. Bavin lay there for what seemed like hours, his body racked with pain and his mind consumed by fear. He knew he had to get help, but was too weak to move. Luckily, some of his fellow villagers had heard his cries for help and came to his rescue. They found him lying in a pool of blood and rushed him to the nearest hospital, where he underwent emergency surgery to save his life. Despite his injuries, Bavin survived the attack and was eventually discharged from the hospital. However, he was left with severe scars and injuries that would take years to heal. The attack had left him traumatized and fearful of the forest that he had once loved so much. Despite his physical and emotional pain, Bavin refused to let the attack define him. He was determined to overcome his fear and move on with his life. He returned to his village where he received support and encouragement from his family and friends. Over time, Bavin's wounds began to heal and he regained his strength and vitality. He continued to tend to the cattle and explore the forest, but he did so with a newfound respect for the wildlife there. He knew that the forest was a dangerous place, but he also knew it was home to some of the most magnificent creatures in the world. Years passed and Bavin grew into a wise and respected community member. He shared his story with others, warning them of the dangers of the forest and teaching them how to avoid similar attacks. He also became a vocal advocate for the conservation of the Asiatic lion and worked tirelessly to protect the forest that had once nearly taken his life. Despite his pain and trauma, Bavid's experience had taught him a valuable lesson. He had learned that the human spirit can prevail even in the face of overwhelming danger. He had learned that strength and courage come from within and that he could survive in even the most dangerous situations with perseverance and determination. Story 5 Reed was a biologist who had always been fascinated by the animal kingdom. He had spent his entire life studying animals and their behavior. His love for animals had brought him to South Africa, where he worked at a sanctuary for rescued animals. His job involved caring for the animals and ensuring they were healthy and happy. One day, the sanctuary received a call about a lion cub that had been found wandering in the wild. The cub, which they named Zebu, was weak and malnourished. Clearly, he had been separated from his mother and could not fend for himself. Reed immediately took a liking to the little lion cub. He spent hours with Zebu, feeding him and playing with him. As time passed, Zebu grew stronger and healthier under Reed's care. They had formed a strong bond, and Zebu would follow Reed around like a loyal dog. Years passed, and Reed had to leave the sanctuary to pursue other opportunities. However, he promised to visit Zebu whenever he could. Over time, Reed had forgotten how dangerous wild animals could be, especially when they had grown into adulthood. When Reed returned to the sanctuary years later, he was excited to see Zebu again. But as he entered the lion's enclosure, he noticed Zebu was no longer the small and playful cub he once knew. Zebu had grown into a fully grown lion and was now the king of his enclosure. Reed could feel Zebu's eyes on him and sense something was wrong. Suddenly, Zebu charged toward Reed, his eyes filled with anger and aggression. Reed tried to run, but Zebu was too fast. The lion grabbed Reed with powerful jaws and pinned him to the ground. Reed could feel Zebu's teeth sinking into his flesh, and he knew that he was in serious trouble. 
He had to act fast if he wanted to survive. With all his strength, he broke free from Zebu's grip and got back on his feet. But Zebu wasn't done yet. The lion charged towards Reed again, but Reed was ready this time. He fought back with all his might, punching and kicking Zebu with everything he had. The two of them fought fiercely, with Reed struggling to defend himself against the powerful lion. Despite being badly injured, Reed refused to give up. He knew that his life was on the line, and he had to fight with everything he had. After what seemed like hours, Reed managed to gain the upper hand. Zebu was exhausted, and he had no more fight left in him. Reed slowly backed away from Zebu, his heart racing with fear and adrenaline. He knew he had narrowly escaped death and was grateful to be alive. Looking at Zebu, he realized the lion was no longer his friend. Zebu was a wild animal, and he would always be dangerous. From that day on, Reed knew that he could never let his guard down around wild animals. He had learned a valuable lesson and knew he was lucky to be alive. Despite the attack, Reed still had a soft spot for animals. He knew they could be dangerous, but he also knew they were beautiful creatures that deserved respect and care.